Let's move on. Let's now try and understand the details about the test that you conduct when you when your y is continuous and x is discrete, issue is centering. Like we discussed, when your y is continuous and x is discrete and y is normally distributed, we have three simple tests. The first, that is referred to as a one sample t. The second, which is referred to as a two sample t. And the third, which is referred to as one way and over. One uh, sample t test is conducted when you wish to compare the mean of a sample to conclude about the population mean to a standard. L let, me, let me make it simple for you. You will always understand that sample is never our subject of study. We look at a sample to conclude about the population behavior. So let's say I'm a car maker and I have been publishing to the rest of the world that now purchase my car, my car is will give you a mileage of 18 kilometers per liter. I'm producing hundreds of cars every day. I take a sample of 20, 30, 40 cars, do trial runs, and I collect data on the mileage that they gave me. Now I've been interested in understanding whether the mean of the sample, basis which I will conclude about the population mean, is equal to the 18 kilometers that are published. So to compare the mean of a sample to a, pop, uh, to a standard, and this standard could be company norm, published information, standards, benchmarking information, etc. In a one sample t-test, null will say that the mean equals the standard, alternate will say that the mean does not equal the standard. And the example could be very simple. You know, if I am looking at attendance data for a particular team, while the organization's stipulated working hour is nine hours, I have picked up attendance data for a particular team. I would want to compare the mean of this sample, but comparing it to a standard of nine hours, I'm doing a one sample d-test. I hope this is simple. But technically speaking, what a one sample t-test will do is that it will create for itself stats, basic stats, one sample t-test. I'm looking at total breakage, I press OK. Let me not give it a target right now. So in the backdrop, technically speaking, what it is doing for itself is that it is creating a confidence interval of the population estimate. So this is the sample mean. It estimates where is the population mean likely to lie. Here it says that the population mean is expected to lie between 11.07 to 11.7. If your target is anywhere between this, if your standard is anywhere between this, it is null hypothesis. That is, that is mean equals the standard, you see here. If your target is anywhere outside this, let's say my target were a 9 kg, then it will be alternate hypothesis. Let me, let me do that for you. Let me give it a target of 9. Obviously, 9 will not fit between 11.07 .7, and 11.7. .7. So it will say alternate hypothesis. P-value is 0 0.000, meaning alternate hypothesis is true. If I were to give it a target of anything between 11.07 and 11.7, .7, let me give it a target of 11.5. It will say it is null hypothesis. Yeah, here you go, 0.695, greater than 0 0.05, meaning null hypothesis is true. That is my data is uh, that the mean of my sample equals this standard. I hope this simple video helps.